All right, I'd like to call the G February 25th, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeal meeting to order. Um, and the first order of business is approving the minutes of the January 28th, 2014 meeting. Does anybody have any comments or any discussion before somebody wants to make a motion? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. One upstairs. Oh, well, first, any, any discussion? All right, all in favor? So that is five to nothing with uh, Matt abs, uh, abstaining because he did not attend. All right. Um, I do not believe there's any old business, any old business we need to address. Okay, so we will move on to uh, new business, which is to hear the request of Michael Wiener for an approval to remodel and expand a non-conforming structure at 34 Reef Road, map U13, lot 12, per section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance. Um, and before we hear from uh, the applicant, um, Ben, can you give us a quick uh, kind of background summary? Sure. Thank you. Uh, John Mitchell came into Town Hall several months ago uh, and described the proposed addition to the house at 34 Reef Road. It's a single family dwelling. Uh, on the, gar the garage side of the house is 18.4 feet from the side property line. Uh, the current setback requirement is 25 feet. They would like to expand that section of the garage parallel with the property line roughly let's see 15 feet and they're not getting closer to the property line so a variance is not required it's similar to the one we heard last month based on 1943b3 similar to, yeah, I believe everybody has a copy of that. So. So, um, my name is Sasha Meisner, and I'm with Mitchell and Associates, and I'm architects, and I'm here representing Michael Weiner. And I also have with me Bill um, Fluff from Drummond and Jackson. He is uh, Michael Weiner's attorney. So the... Um, the reason why we're here is for the addition that Mr. Weiner would like to put on his home, and the structure is the building is non conforming. Is should I be using that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that sound is coming out of this microphone. Oh, is it? Oh, it's Barry. Barry, he's, he's good. It, I think he's just rubbing against the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The microphone. Is sorry? It's all set. Okay. Okay. It was We're just good. the plan rubbing against the microphone. So the um, property is, 34, is located at 34 Reef Road, which, just to warrant you, is down off of 77. It's in the Trendy Point neighborhood. So seven, Route 77 to Trendy Road, and it's, it's in that neighborhood. It is an oceanfront property. The zone is it's a residence within the Residence A district, as well as the Shoreland Overlay Zone. The entire property is within the Shoreland Overlay Zone. Uh, the 250 uh, Shoreland measurement line is somewhere within the road, Reef Road, so it's the whole parcel is in the Shoreland Zone. Uh, the use is a single family residence. The lot size is 30,974 square feet. The setbacks are shown on the plan, and they were defined based on the residence A zone, as well as uh, setbacks defined in the developed non-conforming lot, section 19.4.3.8.2. So the front setback is 25 feet, and the side setbacks are also 25 feet. 
The rear setback is defined by the shoreland setback zone, the 75 feet from the uh, high annual tide line. The zoning ordinance states to use the normal high water line. Um, it was determined during a site visit with um, Ben McDougall, uh, Jim Fisher from Northeast Civil Solutions, a surveyor, as well as John Mitchell, to use the high annual tide line because it's a more um, precise measurement to measure the setback line up from. So the, you can also see the existing septic system is in the front, front yard. As far as the addition, um, in the proposed plan, you can see there's a addition is all taking place in the front of the house. That's uh, approximately 700 square feet. So we're requesting approval based on section 1944B1, which states that um, non-conforming buildings and structures for enlarging them. A non-conforming structure may be added to or expanded after obtaining a permit from the code officer, provided that such addition or expansion does not increase the non-conformity of the structure and is in accordance with subparagraphs A and B. So this is not increasing the non-conformance of the structure. Um, and no uh, addition part is taking place within the 75 foot setback area, which is referencing the subparagraphs A and B. So uh, those are uh, not applicable. We did, uh, Mr. Weiner did reach out to his neighbors to see if there was any issues with what he was proposing to do. We did receive a few letters and emails from them uh, without any concerns about the addition. Uh, so we haven't heard anything uh, negative about it. The lot coverage within the shoreland zone is um, required to be 20% or less. So the existing lot coverage is at 19.9%. When we add the addition onto the building, it bumped it over the 20%. So to compensate, you can see on the driveway, there's a, a three foot, we're decreasing the width of the driveway by three foot for a length of 90 feet, which brings us back down to the 20% lot coverage. So are there any questions? Uh, Eugene, I, I did want to just kind of have you walk me through the math again on the yeah, the coverage. Uh, it's it's 19.9 right now is the coverage. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you say that the addition is 700 square feet? Yeah. Okay. And and the reduction in the um, uh, in the driveway is three by the 90 by three foot. But what also is taking up some of the existing lot coverage is you can see the expansion. Uh, the garage is increasing, so that it's kind of overlapped there. Um, I know that the 270 doesn't match up to the 700, but if you see how the garage is expanding. That's why I asked my question. Yeah, no, I know. I thought about that too. <laughs> so the garage is expanding and it just takes out some of the pavement. See how that works? I... So even though the square footage is 700 feet, part of that is taking up existing lot coverage. Jim? <clears throat> you know approximately how much? Um, can I call the There's also a landing. You see this, the landing for the walkway? That's part of the existing. There is a breakdown. There is a breakdown in the top of the, um, in the notes. There's a breakdown of the, uh, of the existing. Does that help? 
it does help. Just to clarify, the, the applicant brought up uh, 1944, and just to, to just to clarify any confusion, we are reviewing it based on 1943, which is a bit of a misnomer, and we've been over that before, where it's 1943 is nonconformance outside of the shoreland overlay, and that's what we're reviewing it under. Uh, nine, that's that was 1943. 1944 is nonconformance within the shoreland overlay. And for that section, that is strictly my review, 1944. There, there's no zoning board approval required. They're going to they're gonna do a modest expansion in the shoreland zone that, uh, that is going to comply with CEO review for shoreland zoning. The part that they don't comply with for CEO review is the side setback and so the, that's the reason why they're here is for the side setback so it, i don't think the board needs to go too far into 1944. i just wanted to clarify that Can you just clarify one thing for me as it relates to our uh, reconstruction or replacement section, so B3? Um, so halfway through the, the, uh, the ordinance, it says, and I'm going to pick up a place here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And the building or structure will, will be located within the original building footprint. This is, this is for a reconstruction, which I think is what this application is for. Will be located within the original building footprint, will not increase the number of square feet of floor area, and will not create or expand any, non, any non-conformity. So if we're adding an addition of 700 feet, aren't you by definition increasing the floor area? And that's why they're here. Because it's yeah. the next, it, just to keep reading, reconstruction yeah. non structure not in compliance with those limitations may be permitted. If, by if us. yeah, if it complied with the phrases you yeah. were reading, It'd be a non -issue. I, I permit it. I saw two emails of people in support of the, of the application. Mm -hmm. um, would you have any, I'm looking for my little map, but would you have any idea roughly where they are relative to 34 Reef Road? Yeah, Bill has a half match and he responded. Sure. Um, folks, this, these are the folks next door. The Hancocks, yeah. Okay. Yep, and they wrote one of the emails. Yep. They're the ones, garage expansions here. They're the ones with the not conforming. Okay. Line. We're not conforming with respect to their property boundary. Okay. And these folks here? Uh, go, yeah. Luna? Lunar, so lunar is it? Okay. Yeah, Luna. Okay. Great, thank you. Where did this where did the property boundary information come from on your on your plan? So the boundary information. We had a, uh, or Mr. Weiner had a survey that was already established before we got here. 
And then we had a survey just for the, the high annual tide line as well as the topo. As well as what was the, the last? To topography. The topography. So that's what, that's what I used as the base map and I took the information from the, um, the survey plan that we had showing the, at least the, the, bound, the lot size. So <clears throat> I, I see it referenced on your plan. So the, this is the plan prepared by uh, D'Alfonso LLC. Yeah. So that was the boundary. Was the house uh, located on that survey as well? It was. So the house was located yep. with respect the to the house, the driveway, everything that we With respect to the boundary line. Um, was that was that a boundary survey? Yeah. It was. I, I see that there's notes on the plan saying the property line's approximate. On this one, because this one is not um, was done by Northeast Civil and they didn't use the survey, the boundary survey. They're not guaranteeing the boundary lines for that one. The only thing they're guaranteeing is the topo and the, the high annual tide line. The reason we didn't use the, uh, the other survey was it was hand-drawn. It was done recently, but it was a hand-drawn. Okay, so they didn't have it electronically. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I, I, the reason I asked that, so the 18.4 feet between the... That's the that is also shown on the hand-drawn survey. Okay, so, yeah. so that was the house and the boundary were located by the same surveyor at some point. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Satisfies me, thanks. Uh, wh where, um, where approximately is the septic system? It's shown on the, uh, it's a dashed line in the front yard. Uh, yeah. okay. And there, the addition to the house is not increasing any of the bedrooms. They're just adding living space, same amount of bedrooms. We know the approximate age of the septic. Um, what does, I do have the septic design. Like uh, 06. 06. Thank you. Will, will the septic tank be moved? No. Shouldn't be impacted. May, that may not fall under our review, but then is there, is there going to be a setback issue with the septic tank? I don't know if this is shown accurately on this plan or not. Yeah, septic tanks generally move. They, they aren't as shown on the plan. And uh, the, the state has written a memorandum stating that 
once a, a septic tank is in the ground, there is not a setback to it. it. The setback is in relation to the septic tank going in, not to other. It's a very odd interpretation of, of setbacks. Uh, so we do have, we, we do have some wiggle as far as state law is concerned on that. But we don't want to get the septic tank too close to the house. I'm sure the excavating contractor will look out for that. Right. Questions relating to the application? Thank you. Comments from the public relating to the uh, pending application? Okay. Um, so I'd like to open it up for a board discussion now. Oh, yes. Um, although we have not heard any comments from the public at the meeting. We did receive two comments submitted by the applicant via that were uh, forwarded via email. One from uh, Chet Lunner, um, and they live. They live at 33 Reef. Uh, living at 33 Reef Road, and also a um, a comment from. Uh, Nancy and Hank Hancock at 32 Reef Road, mm -hmm. um, and both uh, Chet Lunner and Nancy and Hank Hancock do not object to the proposed changes. And now to board discussion. The addition into the non conforming area. Yeah. <clears throat> so, the main thing I'd like to just be narrowing the guide where we have that space above. Um, I also would appreciate the, the neighbor on that side that has acknowledged or assented to the application. I guess I just echo that. I mean, I had some initial concerns with the additional non-conforming portion, but the narrowing of the driveway, the ascent of the neighbors, um, seems to make that a non-issue. I, I would agree. I mean, I uh, I think it's a, a well put together application, and uh, they're you know right there on the twenty percent, probably to the and. Uh, so I'm, I'm generally supportive of the, the uh, application. I would echo all the comments that you made. Any other discussion? Um, just briefly, the, uh, on the uh, pictures, does the roof line increase in height? And does it increase in height where it questions that there is a 35 feet? Mark, the building height. 
that's not that's a non-issue. I mean, I, I, I think it's a non-issue because I think when it comes up for permit, that would be handled by Ben, and if it was violating the building code with respect to the height of the structure, he wouldn't have approved the uh, permit. Okay. Unless I'm incorrect, Ben. Uh, I will review for building height with the permit issuance. Somebody like to make a motion. Can I make one other point? Oh, sure. A couple of people brought up the width of the driveway and the three feet, and the applicant has mentioned that they were either going to reduce the width of the driveway by three feet. They're also considering doing an alternative, uh, possibly a grassed parking area where you see this turnaround in order to make up for the lot coverage. They weren't quite sure how they're going to rectify the lot coverage issue. Uh, so I just wanted to make the board aware of that. And if the three feet off the side of the driveway, you know, if that is, if that is a condition of the board for this approval, we, we should be clear about that tonight. Or is, or is the board open to the applicant doing something different with their lot coverage? issue. From, from my perspective, uh, you know, as long as, as long as they're eliminating impervious area, or offsetting that impervious area such that the, um, such that the, such that the law coverage is 20% or less, it, I don't think it matters to me so much. I'm, I'm on board with that as well. Okay. So, so that's something that's not reflected in these papers. Uh, I'm troubled with, with the yeah. Um, yeah. allowance to have discretion <coughs> that's not considered because it's it's uh, part and parcel of the overall application. The representation is to us is that there's a narrowing of the driveway and that it's not many alternatives to have in turn is the septic in the, in the middle of the front drive. <clears throat> so that we're only talking about the, so the hammerhead at that far right side or now. Um, I'm not sure how many other alternatives there are to deal with the uh, coverage issue. Well, arguably you could, and I'm not disagreeing with your comment, but if you leave it open-ended, arguably they could modify the shed, the stone walk, the outdoor shower. I mean, you know, there's a number of different ways to get the 20% coverage. Just a question, I think, of how much latitude we want to give the applicant to yes. to play around with those variables. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I mean, if whether it's as I understand, maybe Ben could clarify, but is it has the applicant indicated that perhaps they would do some sort of Structural section, just with loam and seed over it, so so it could be used. Um, yeah, the, parking or for a turnaround. Yeah, we, we it would we, be considered a, a pervious surface. Is that? Yeah, we 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 were we we were in a discussion about different methods and different options that they had to balance the impervious surface, and basically the application deadline just came up on us before we could come to a conclusion on that. So they decided to reflect it this way on the application. And I, I think the board has the latitude to allow them to change that. I think the board can also uh, require them to construct it as shown on the plan. But I, I, I just like the board to specify what their preference is. Matt, what's your concern with giving them some latitude as long as it stays you know, at or under 20 percent. I see that it's a jurisdiction issue, and that for us to opine as to the that small part in the square, um, part of it of the coverage has to be addressed elsewhere. So I see that the driveway is a subsidiary issue to to the. Um, the dark section that we've been talking about. Um, I'm not adverse to other alternatives. 
Uh, I'm just saying the way I see it is that, that there's one gateway decision to be made, and then there's others that follow. And so, where else would there be a savings for, to, for the coverage point? So I, I, I see it as um, the principal issue for us will dictate um, the setting off of the other um, coverage. Hopefully I'm making myself clear, maybe not. Um, and plus the, the representation is this is more likely than not it's the, it's the option that's going to go, go forward. And so what happens if that's not done, something else is done? Is the, is the principal issue is the 20%? So then it really doesn't matter what they do or how they account for that. Is, is the principal issue not 20%? <clears throat> you only get to the 20% once the, um, the non-conforming Well, right, is right. But, but once, once it, it, if we were to approve the non-conforming setback, then, then the other issue, or the subsidiary issue, which is tied into that, is 20%. not exceeding the 20%. Yes. But isn't that the subsidiary issue, not how they get to it? Or, or, I mean, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just that this one all the representation to us is that this is a sliver. We can have a carve out provision saying this or, or another alternative that's similar in feature. Um, but I guess the other is that they, let's say they leave the driver alone, but they account for that, take out the shed, for example. Um, so, does that mean that the neighbor's consent is the same? So this gets into the notice of the, what did the neighbor assent to? You know, we have it just on, on paper alone. Well, they, they looked at a set of plans, which I'm assuming are the set of plans we have before us. Right. So I'm, I'm not adverse to having some flexibility, but how far is a piece of string? You know, how far do you have a, a change that becomes different? That's, it, a, that's a fair point. Anyone else have any comments on this 20% issue and how it's how it is addressed? Yeah, I, I hear your points. I wouldn't be opposed to to making a, a condition of approval that that it be addressed per the plan. And the other alternative is that we delegate that task for coverage because it would come down to the, the building permit, correct? Well, I, I would. Be, I'm tasked with that regardless. That's, yeah. that's part of the 1944 review is lot coverage and uh, impervious surface doesn't have to be addressed. It's not part of 1943. So the board is not required to review this application for impervious surface. But, it, it, but I understand what you're saying. It, it is part of the application that's in front of you. I mean, this, this sort of gets back to the issue we were dealing with last meeting with respect to what's before us and if, if we're really if, if what's really only properly be, you know again they're doing work to their house some of it is before the board not all of it is before the board this this seems a little bit more tied together than and i don't believe we we're here but a little bit more tied together than the application last month which was a lot of work a tiny bit that didn't affect the rest of the application um, this seems a little bit more linked to me. I guess the other issue is that it doesn't matter where they account for the 20%, as long as they account for it. Well, and, you're, and the CEO is tasked with ensuring that 20% is compliant with. And that there would probably be a good reason why they would alter their, their construction if it doesn't, you know, maybe there's a, a good reason why there's a change. So that's a, Whatever they want to leave the driveway is why, but they want to account for that twenty percent of elsewhere. I'm, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm arguing against myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the point you made earlier, or we just made a few minutes ago, that that the that the neighbors that that presumably did assent to the to the to the uh, addition saw this set of plans. I don't know. 
Yeah, I'm not going to try and project what, they're, what they were thinking or what was in their mind, but I mean, yeah. this is what they saw and looked good to them. And if, if it is something else, then how are they going to feel about that? Anyway. But, but it, it would seem, and again, not putting thoughts into their minds, but the, the primary issue here with respect to a neighbor is this non-conforming section of the renovation. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether they take uh, some space off or some impervious surface off of the, the driveway um, in one section of the driveway or another section, at least from a, an abutter's perspective, I don't think that's going to make a, a large uh, impact on the aesthetics of, of what, what is being proposed. For you know, what, what the abutter sees when they're on their property and looking at the subject property. I, I hear, I understand both points, but it seems to me that so long as the lot coverage does not exceed the 20% and it's not expanding the non conforming, any non conforming use, uh, at that point it simply meets the ordinance and then I think it just falls to the code enforcement officer's discretion if I'm reading it correctly. I think I agree and, and one of the suggestions is what if they remove the shed? Yeah. Well, they're certainly allowed to remove the shed on their property yeah. and that will decrease the lot coverage and if that's how they get it, I, I don't believe the board has the authority to, you know, prevent that. They can remove the shed. All right, then I'll withdraw my objection. Okay, well. <coughs> So any other comment from the board? Anybody like to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the application for an addition uh, to the uh, to the uh, Wiener home, uh, which is a non-conforming structure located at 34 Reef Road. Okay. And uh, any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? That is uh, approved six to nothing. And who seconded, please? Thank you. Before we get to the findings of fact and additional findings of fact, the discussion that we just had with respect to the impervious surface, I just want to make sure since the, it, it seems like what we had discussed was although the papers indicate one proposed way to get down to the 20%, we're not limiting it to that. So let's, let me go through the findings of fact and after I read these, we can decide if we need to add something to reflect that board agreement. Um, this is a request to remodel and expand a single family dwelling per section 19-4-3B3 of the zoning ordinance at map U13, lot 1234 Reef Road. The applicant is John Mitchell. Michael Wiener is the owner of record of the property at map U13, lot 12. Additional findings of fact. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure, and three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Is there an additional finding or? I don't think we need one. 
I don't think we have. The application states that the impervious coverage is not going to exceed 20 percent. Can't exceed 20 percent, then they'd be not in compliance. So I, I don't think we need to be legislating it beyond that. I'd agree. All right. Uh, we need to vote uh, on those uh, findings as read. All in favor? Those are approved. Six nothing. And um, the application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, communications. I don't believe we have any communications. We should improve our communications. <laughs> um, and uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? To adjourn. Yeah. Six, six nothing to adjourn. All right. The meeting's adjourned. <laughs>